Aren't they beautiful? I may have left it too late. The male ate the fry. These guys do not look deformed at all, so it's great. There are a ton of fry. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be looking at the spawning activity that's been happening in the fish room. There's been a lot of it lately, and I wanna share some of that with you. So let's get into this week's video. So here's the Leilupi tank, obviously. And I was right, they did spawn underneath this rock in the middle here between um, these two, in that crevice. And there are fry in the tank. There's one underneath mum and dad. Lies. And they are hard to spot until you look at the back of the tank. And focus on there. And you can see there's heaps hopping around at the back. So I'm feeding them baby brine shrimp at the moment. And uh, yeah, just really glad that they're doing well. They're about a week old now. Aren't they beautiful parents? Very, very good parents. So I'll show you the other Leilupi pair. This is them here. Now, I don't have uh, Christmas catfish in this tank because they just get belted to death by them. But uh, this male at the top there is attacking the female. You can see her dorsal fin is pretty torn up and uh, since made up. He was attacking her for about a day or two. And now she submits to him and he's happy. Uh, they had spawned for a third time or a fourth time. I've lost count now. And um, one of the parents ate the babies again, and uh, it resulted in the female getting belted up pretty badly by the male. You can see they're getting along again. So that's what happens with Leilupis. I believe what happened is that the male ate the fry, the female was trying to defend her babies, and he just attacked her. You know, he got what he wanted, regardless. So I don't know what it's going to take for this male to get used to having babies with him, uh, but he's definitely very, very different to the other male I have, which is a shame. Now, I've said it before, these guys aren't as orange as they look on this camera, this is my mobile phone camera, and uh, it kind of saturates yellows for some reason. Uh, they come out really nice on camera. But yeah, a bit of a disappointment that this guy keeps eating his fry. So that orange there is definitely, they don't look like that. They kind of more look like that. That's more of a truer representation of how they look uh, there. When the image gets super orange, that's just very uh, misleading. They're not that orange. But let's look at this other tech. So we got our white calvus fry, oldest babies in the fish room. And my breeding pair of white calvers. I have named the male Carl. Carl, because it's calvers. Makes sense, right? <laughs> and um, the female is still guarding that shell. Obviously, haven't taken her out. And uh, there are fry in the tank. They're very hard to see. Right there, center frame, see the eye. Camera's focused on it. There's another one there, and another one there. And there are heaps strewn throughout the aquarium. So I'm gonna start catching them now and popping them in their brand new home. So guys, I may have left it too late to take the female with the shell out of this tank because there are a ton of fry in this corner that I'm going to have to remove. So here is the Alto Lampologus Calvus fry tank. These are the fry I've caught out of the parents tank this morning and approximately 50 in here. The flow's turned off at the moment just so they can easily get to the baby brine shrimp and you just see it pretty much suspended in the water column 
and you can see the baby calvus just laying on the floor. This is what they do for pretty much the first, almost the first month of their life. Eventually they would become free swimming in the water column for longer periods of time and pick off the food out of the water column. But uh, it takes a while to get there and if you have the bottom of the tank a little bit dirty, they can possibly pick up infections from that. So that's why I've got this nice clean sand bed. So the water flow will turn on eventually again and uh, move this brine shrimp around a little bit more. Uh, the feed mode on these pumps goes for 10 minutes and uh, after 10 minutes the flow turns back on and this uh, brine shrimp will get moved around a little bit more, attracting the calvus attention and the flow is turning right down in this tank so um, they're not expending too much energy moving around to get their food. Yeah, we'll see how they go. It's about 50 in here, like I said. So guys, I'm feeding the Le Loopy baby brine shrimp. And if you can look past the brine shrimp that's in the water column, you'll see all the fry at the back. There are loads of fry in here. I think this is their largest spawn. So we've got the dad there. The mum here. In the fry at the back there, hugging the sand bed at the moment, because you're seeing me move around. The more you look, the more you see all these eyeballs moving around. Now, I've noticed that the female, her dorsal fin's a little bit torn up, so maybe the male and her have been having a little bit of a blue today. But that'll be fine. Should recover. They always do. Look at that. Amazing. Just come into the fish room early morning and I see the ventralis female has let out her fry finally. All we'll swimming around there, not sure how many there are. It's probably I suppose about 10, 10 to 12. Quite large fry. She was holding them in her mouth for the worst six weeks. That's crazy. So uh, I'm gonna catch her, get her out, and hop her back in the fourth of take. This in the past she has started to pick off her fry, unfortunately. So put her in the tank and give her a good feed. So I've counted them, there is 11 fry in here. You can see I've added some baby brine shrimp into the tank to give them their first feed. Hopefully they work out what it is. Oh, now they're starting to pick it off. There they go. <laughs> they're more interested in the lay loopy that are next door. Be doing really well, they all look like they've got nice body shape, no bent spines, and that can sometimes happen. Mouth brooding cichlids, they're crammed up in their mother's mouth for so long. These guys do not look deformed at all, so it's great. Nice healthy fish. A couple of guys got the right idea, hitting the brine shrimp. <laughs> but yeah, the lights have just turned on, it's the first time they've seen light in a tank without being in their mother's mouth. First time they're eating, so they're all starting to catch on to what they're meant to do. <laughs> Getting the idea, very good. So here's the Neolamphalogus Lelupi tank. And again, these guys aren't as orange as they appear on this camera. A mobile phone camera saturates yellows and oranges. But can you see all the fry swimming at the back there? Awesome. And they're really getting along. This male and female always swim together. 
following each other around the tank, coming into contact with each other. It's actually quite unbelievable to watch sometimes, the way they interact. And then, yeah, before you know it, they'll be broken up for a day or two, and then they go back together like this. I guess it's got to do with their spawning behaviour, um, their hormones. Uh, if she's coming into breeding condition again, I suppose she would be in the next week or two. Uh, these guys have been free swimming for about a week now. Uh, I've just fed them some live microworms. And uh, that's for the fry, obviously. And yeah, I just love watching them get into the water column and swim around like a big cloud. See how the female interacts with the male? She like shimmers and um, kind of bows to his dominance. So if she was to try and swim away from him, he'd chase her like a dog and potentially bite her. Uh, if she submits to him, basically submits to him, then it's all good. He will not harass her. Look at them looking at their babies. The instinct that these fish have not to harm their own, not to harm their own babies. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, these guys have really settled into their tanks so well. I was nervous about moving them from their quarantine tank where they had spawned three or four times, I lost count in the end, potentially even more times, and uh, I was concerned about breaking their bond, but I had to move them out of there and get them into this tank, get them into a larger tank. And, uh, bit the bullet and it has paid off tremendously. They've only been here for going on two and a half weeks, three weeks now, and look at that cloud of fry. Their bond did break for about a week. A little under a week, actually. And then, yeah, I suspected that they'd spawn. And, I was sure enough, I was, guess I was correct, right? Look at that fry. Incredible. And you can see how they just sit around the tank now. Parents. Female's dorsal fin looks a bit chewed up. He must have had a bit of a go at her last night or the day before but I didn't notice it at the time so it's a fairly recent uh, tear on the, the back of her dorsal fin but they're back together again at the moment zoom in on the fry Let's see they'll stay in the water column and they are at the moment sometimes I'll come up to the front of the tank and they'll all swim away hide underneath that rock but uh, this time we're staying out, which is good to see. And to get used to me, obviously. And the parents, well, they were very skittish when I first put them in this tank. And obviously now they're finally being in front of the tank, especially finally being in front of the tank while they've got the fry there. So they come to the front of the tank when they see me, they're going to get fed. And, uh, it's all it's going as well as I could have hoped. Beautiful, beautiful fish. So there you have it guys, all the spawning activity that's happened in the fish room. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.